Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can sketch parametric equations just by looking at the behavior of x and y as t varies. Now when you're going to sketch any parametric equation start with a central value of t is 0. Um, in this example where x equals 2t, y equals 3t plus 1, when t is 0 x is 0 and y comes out to 1. So the first point when t is 0 will be a 0, 1. Let's imagine it's that point there. We'll just mark a 1 in there. Now do you notice that y is a linear function and x is a linear function? That is we've got t to the power 1 and t to the power 1 here. And when you've got cases like this you're going to get a straight line. Now when t is greater than 0, x is positive. That means we're going to be moving out in this direction. But as we move out in this direction, for t greater than 0, y is going to be greater than 1. And it's going to rise at a faster rate than the rate that we're moving out in the x direction. So it's going to be a straight line, something like this. Now when we take on board values of t less than 0, x is going to be negative. So we're going to start moving out in this direction. And y? Well y will start to be positive but will gradually become negative. But it is a straight line because they are to the same degree. So we're going to have a line coming back like that. And sometimes we're asked to put on the branches, the values of t on the branches. Now by that we mean that this branch up here is where t is greater than 0. This point was when t equaled 0. And this branch down here was when t was less than 0. And you might also be asked to find out where it crosses the x-axis. And if that were the case, then all you've got to do is that at this point we know that y is 0. So we could say that when y is 0, we would have 3t plus 1 would equal 0. And if we took 1 from both sides and divided by 3, t would equal minus a third. And if you put minus a third back into here for x, you'll see that x would be 2 times minus a third, which is minus 2 thirds. So this point here is minus 2 thirds. And it occurs when t is minus a third. OK, well let's look at this one here, number 2. x equals t plus 3 and y equals t squared. So we start off with t equaling 0. And when t equals 0, x will be 3 and y will be 0. So Let's say that 3, 0 is this point here. And this is the point when t is 0. So let's have a look at the branch of the curve when t is greater than 0. Now when t is greater than 0, x is going to start to move away to the right from 3. We're going to have values of x more than 3. But y is going to always be positive because it's squared. But also it is to the power 2 compared to this value of t which is the power 1. So y is going to rise at a quicker rate than as we move out in the direction of x. So in other words our graph is going to go upwards like this for values of t greater than 0. Now what happens when we take values of t less than 0? Well again, x is going to remain positive at first, but x is going to take on values less than 3. So we're gradually going to move in this direction. But y is always going to be positive because it's a t squared. And also, do you notice, because we've got this central value t is 0, if t were 1, 
we get y is 1. But if t was negative 1, y would still return 1. So we actually end up with symmetry about this vertical line here passing through the 3. So we have a curve coming up like this. And this is the branch where t is less than 0. And again, if we wanted to know what this point was, the point where the curve crosses the y-axis, well, x would have to be 0. And if x was 0, t would have to be minus 3. And if t is minus 3, y would be minus 3 squared, which is 9. So this point here would be 9. And it occurs when t is equal to minus 3. OK, let's have a look at 3 now. With 3, we've got x equals t cubed, y equals t squared. t is naught. When t is naught, x is naught, y is naught. So we know we go through the origin here. So let's just put that is when t is naught. We're at the origin. So we've got our central value. Now let's have a look at the branch when t is positive. As we put positive values in here for t, x is positive and y is positive but x increases at a faster rate because it's t cubed than y. So in other words we're going to move out in this direction faster than we are going upwards. So therefore the curve is going to look something like this for t greater than 0. Now when I put negative values in for t, x is going to be negative. So it's going to go out in this direction. And it's going to go out at the same rate as it went out in this direction. And y is always going to remain positive. We're going to get the same y values for the positive values of t as we get for the same negative values of t. So we're going to have symmetry about the y-axis. So we're going to have a curve coming up doing something like this. And this is the branch for t less than 0. And lastly, number 4, x equals t cubed, y equals t. When t is naught, x is naught, y is naught. So we're at the origin here. That's when t is naught. When t is greater than naught, x is going to be positive. So we're moving out in this direction, and y will be positive. But x is going to increase at a faster rate than y, because we've got t cubed as opposed to t to the power 1. So we're going to move out in this direction quicker than we can rise. So we're going to have a curve again doing this, like this one up here. So this is the branch when t is greater than 0. Now when t is less than 0, x is going to be negative. But y is also going to be negative. It's going to have the same y values as you had over here for the same t value. But over here, they're just going to be negative for the same t value. So like, for instance, when t was, say, 3, y was 3. But when t was minus 3, y would be minus 3. So what we've got is a curve looking something like this. This is the branch where t is less than 0. And it has rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry about the origin of 180 degrees. So I hope that's given you some idea of how we can sketch parametric equations just by looking at the behavior of x and y. Now, just these four questions is not really sufficient. So what I would suggest is you have a look at the other video that I've got on sketching parametric equations. And there's another four examples that you might like to try. And they reflect further qualities 
about curves.